Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Okay, lesson 11. Perimeters and areas of polygonal regions defined by systems of inequality. So this is kind of a review. I'm sure you've done this before. Math 7, Math 8, Algebra 1. Okay, so anywho, first thing I see is, where's my pen? There we go. The first thing I see is one, two, three, four, five, six. So they give us an example that doesn't fit the graph if we're using squares as one unit of measurement. So let's go with two, four, six, eight. So y is less than or equal to seven. First, you just graph y equals seven. So that's a straight line. And let's do it in blue and a little thinner than that. And this was two, four, six, seven is halfway between set eight and six. So there is our line and it's going to go forever in both directions. So you should have arrows on the end. So that would just be y equals seven. The less than says to shade below, and it's every single value in the coordinate plane below this blue line. So in order to shade that, I need to create a box like so. And then I'm going to shade it. And let's use blue. Fill color blue. And then if I go properties, and make it a little see-through. So there is what you should have for the graph of y is less than or equal to seven. Okay, b, x is greater than negative three. So the first thing we need to remember, this is kind of review, there is no equal sign. So when I draw my line segment, I need it dashed. It does not include that value. And x equals negative three is one two, three. This one is on the graph. So this is the line y equals. This is the line y equals negative three. But it's dashed because there's no equal sign and x is greater than negative three. Well, what's greater than negative three? Negative two, negative one, zero, one. So we want to shade over here. So then I get my box and get rid of the border and let's shade this box red. And then I will go to properties and make it so see-through. That's good. So what am I lacking? Arrows. And so it is all values to the right of the line x equals three, but not including points on it. Part C, now we have a linear equation. There's no equal sign, so my line's going to be dashed. And let's use, uh, let's just keep it blue here. So think of this as y equals mx plus b. b is our y-intercept, one, two, three, four. So I put a dot right there. And slope is one half, rise over run, up one over two, up one over two, up one over two. So I'm just going to go that far. So it's the straight line going this direction here. The slope's positive going up from left to right. It is not equals. So when I draw this line, it's going to be dashed. And I'm just going to connect. Whoops. I'm just going to connect these lines. I need to adjust that a little bit. So if I move this over like so, and this down just a hair, I'm going through those two points here and here, there's the line. Oh, that's neat, okay. So there's the arrows going both directions forever. And then now I look at the inequality. So the dashed is because there's no equal sign. Less than means we shade below, all right? So this time it's gonna be a little more tricky for me to shade. Let me try it. All right. I don't know 
if I can adjust the shape of that or not. I don't think I can. Uh, let's see. Bear with me here. Let me try. No. All righty. So. Okay, so I used a right triangle here and now I'm going to get rid of the border and let's shade below red and then change its properties to a little transparent there. So there we go. So this is the line y equals one half x minus four and we shade below in the line stash because there's no equal sign. Alrighty, and now we have another e equation, a linear equation. So y-intercept is five, one, two, three, four, five, put a dot there. Slope is negative two thirds, down two over one, two, three, down two over one, two, three, and so on. It is equals this time. So I'm going to make my segment solid. And so I'm going to draw a line like so. And then just adjust it a little bit. Of course, if you're doing this on paper, you're just using pencil. And arrows at both ends, obviously. And use a ruler doing this. Um, it's supposed to be accurate. And just drawing a freestyle um, Trying to do what I did on that last one. I think we can get it to go like this. All right, let me manipulate this off screen. Okay, so there it is. This would continue shading over here and down here, but you get the idea. Solid line, slope of negative two thirds, y intercept of five. I shaded the wrong side. Y is greater than. There, that's better. Greater than is above that line. So this is the equation y is greater than or equal to, or the inequality, I should say. y is greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 5. So if I picked a value over here, it'd be true. No matter what value would make this equation true. Plug in an x here, and I would get a y that is in that shaded region. OK, so there's a quick review. OK, page 2 brings us to example 1. A parallelogram, so there's the key right here. There is a key term right there, a parallelogram. What does that mean? Opposite sides are the same length, they're congruent, and opposite sides are parallel. So the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here. All right, so with the base of length B, so if this is the point zero comma zero, then this is the point B comma zero. I'm at over B up zero. So it says base length B and a height of H can be situated in the coordinate plane as shown. Verify that the shoelace formula gives the area of the parallelogram as BH. So remember the area of a parallelogram is base times height. Okay, we're gonna keep that little tidbit of information right here. Base times height is the area of this. We need to know the base length, which we already do. It's a distance of B. Okay, so this is a length of B. So that means that this is also a length of B. And it says verify that the shoelace formula gives the area of the parallelogram as BH. We wanna prove that the shoelace formula is gonna give us A equals B times H. So um, the distance from the y-axis to here is some value x. So I'm going to label this point right here over x up h, if you will. So if I went over an x value and up to h, that would put me here. If I am at 0, 0, I am here. So if I am, so I call this a. If I call this point b, that is the point B comma zero, and it is a distance of B because B minus zero is B. So if I have X comma H, this point, and this is a distance of B, 
then this point here, which I will call C, and this one D, this would be X plus B, comma, the same height. Because if the distance from here to here is the X minus this X, then I'd have X plus B minus X, and the X is canceled, and I'm left with B. So this is a distance of B, so that's what I had to put here to get B when I took this minus X. Hopefully you understood that. And that, that is the key to this problem. All right, so there are our four points in terms of X, B, and H, and then I'll obviously zero because we have the origin. So let's recall the formula first. Area equals, I forgot my equal sign, Area equals one half x sub one. Okay, x sub one. Uh, do I really want to write this? No, we've done it. One half x sub one, which is zero, times y sub two, which is zero, plus x sub two, which is b, times y sub three, which is h, plus y sub x sub three, which is x plus b times this y, which is h, plus this x times the first y there. Then we do the minus. So let's change colors for the minus side. Now we're going around counterclockwise again, starting with y1, which is zero times the next x, which is b, minus this y, 0, times this x, which is x plus b, minus this y, which is h, times this x, don't need a parenthesis, it's just x, times x, minus this y, times this X. Okay, and there is our parentheses that we need to take half of. So area equals one half, and zero times zero is zero, plus B times H is BH, plus X plus B times H, so it'd be plus X plus B times H which is x um, h plus bh, if I distribute, plus this is 0, and then this 0 times b is 0, minus 0 times this, which is 0, minus at hx. So this is going to turn into a minus sign. Let's switch to blue for this side. Minus, and let's put the x first, xh minus h times zero, which is just zero. So then when I close these parentheses, I have a bh plus xh plus bh minus xh, okay? So if I have a plus xh and a minus xh, they cancel. And I'm left with the area equals one half bh plus bh or two b h, well, one half times two is one times b h, and we just have proven that the area is base times height based on the shoelace formula. Oh, mind equals blown. Okay. Example two, a triangle with base b and a height of h can be situated in the coordinate plane as shown. According to Green's theorem, what is the area of the triangle? So Green's theorem is just simply stating that if you have a um, a border, if you will, around a region, then you can take every microscopic little border and find the area within. So this is zero, zero. So we will call this point A, and it is zero comma zero. This is point B, and it is the distance B because the distance is B minus zero comma zero. And then up here, this is some x comma h. The height is h, that's our y. 
So there are our three points, if I call that C, A, B, C. So according to Green's theorem, what's the area of the triangle? So we'd say area equals one half X sub one plus, I'm sorry, times X sub two or Y sub two, I mean, X sub one times Y sub two plus X sub two times y sub three plus x sub three, which is this, times y sub one, which is zero. And then we switch to minus and start with the y's from our starting point and go counterclockwise again. So y sub one is zero times x sub two, which is b minus y sub two, which is zero times x sub three, which is x minus y sub three, which is h times x sub one, which is zero. So then I take the whole thing and we're gonna take half of it. So we're going to simplify. So the area equals one half. Zero times zero is zero. B times h is b h. And plus x times zero is zero that goes away. So anything that we multiply by zero disappears. So let's just do that. Oh. Done. Area equals one half base times height. So I don't need my parentheses now. And there it is. Okay, page three. Oh, forgot that. Page three, quadrilateral region is defined by the system of inequalities below. Okay, so the first thing I want to look at when I'm going to graph this is to sketch this region with these four inequalities is, that's an equal sign, equal sign, equal sign, equal sign. So these are all going to be solid lines. The next thing I want to look at is the y-intercepts. 12, negative four, two, and six. So if I look at this graph, one, two, three, four, five, six is here, but 12 would be way up here. So I'm going to go in um, units of two, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 would be right here. And a slope of negative two is down two over one. So even though I am doing two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, down four over two is still the same as down two over one, which would be halfway down two over one. So down two over one full square is just a scale. If you understand what I'm saying about going up two over one is only halfway. If we're doing a one, whoops, not one, no. one, I don't know. Two, four, two, four. Okay, so there's my first one. I'll do that one in red. And then the next one is, well, I did the 12 first. The next one is six. So two, four, six is my y-intercept here. Slope of one is up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, and so on like this. So that's going to go down this way. I'll draw the lines after. And then the next one I'll do in blue. So, uh, y intercept negative four is here, two, four. And the slope of two is up two over one, up two over one, up two over one, and so on. Okay, down two over one and down two over one. So there's the blue one. This is blue. The red one was here. And the green one is here. And then I'll make this one purple. So a y-intercept of two is right here, down one over one, down one over one, down one over one, and so on, like this. And then up one over one to go the other direction. So there are the four lines. Okay, and so now I will switch to lines. There's an equal sign, so they're solid. So I'll choose this. And let's see, do the red one first. So I'll start here and that is right there. The green one was the one with the y-intercept of 
two. So I'm going to start here and just copy all these or follow these, not copy them, trace over them. So there's the green line. That's line y equals x plus six. And now the blue one is the negative four y intercept and the blue dots. So that's this one. And then finally, the purple one is right here. So those are the four regions. So then I'll do in black the quadrilateral region that we define from this. So we're going to be below the green line, below the red, above the purple, and above the blue because of the greater than, greater than, less than, less than. So the actual quadrilateral we are talking about is right here. There's one. And then going from here to here, from here down to here, and finally back over to here. So that black region in the middle here is my quadrilateral. So now that I've found that, let's just delete the lines to create, to avoid more confusion. I'll erase my dots here. And there we have it. There is our quadrilateral. So if I, I sketch the region, that's done. Determine the vertices of the quadrilateral. Remember it's twos. So if I call this A, it's the point two comma zero. Four, two, four, this is the point four comma four. We'll call that B. And this is C and we'll call that two, two, four, six, eight. That's going to be two comma eight. And then finally D is over here and that's negative two positive four. Okay, negative two, four. So I'm gonna write those over here. So I'm gonna put them in order, um, starting with A. Two comma zero, four comma four, two comma eight, and negative two comma four. Okay. All right, so find the perimeter of the quad quadrilateral region. So now we need to find the perimeter. So I'm just going to do this quickly. It's just the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula, if you will. So it's a square root of the base. So if I made a little triangle here, the distance from here to here is two. Two squared is four. Oh wait, it's four. Hang on, let me start over. That's negative two to two, two, four. Four squared is 16. Four squared is 16. This distance is the sum of the squares, which is 32. The square root of 32 is this side. AB, so I'm gonna write these over here. So DA equals the square root of 32. This is two squared is four. This is four squared is eight, uh, 16. Uh, 16 plus four, so this is the square root of 20. So AB equals the square root of 20. And then I want BC. So BC is here. So one side of the triangle's length four, squared is 16 by two squared is four. Again, that's the square root of 20. So this is equal to, so AB is the same length as BC square root 20. And let me just move this over a little bit like so. And then finally, this is up to or four, I mean, four squared is 16, four squared is 16, 16 plus 16 is 32. So this is the square root of 32. So CD equals the square root of 32. And the perimeter equals the sum of all of these. So let me just get my calculator out and I will add them up. So square root 32, and there's two of them. So how would I just say two square root 32? Two square root 32 plus two square root 20. And that will give me the perimeter, which is approximately 20.26 approximately 20.26 units. 
All right. Now it says to find the area of the quadrilateral region. So let me just slide this up a little bit. And I'm going to use the <clears throat> Green's theorem, or it's also called the Shoelace formula. A equals one half parentheses. We're going to start with A. We have to go counterclockwise. X1 is 2 times Y2, which is 4, plus X2, which is 4, times Y3, which is 8, plus X3, which is 2, times Y4, which is 4, plus X4, which is negative 2, times A's or Y1, which is 0. Then it's minus and start with the Y starting at A. Y1 is 0 times X2, which is 4, minus Y2, which is 4, times X3, which is 2, minus Y3, which is 8, times X4, which is negative 2, minus Y4, which is 4, times X1, which is 2. So here's the long drawn out formula of the shoelace theorem and it's one half. Four times two is eight plus eight times four is 32 plus four times two is eight. That is zero, that goes away. This goes away. Minus eight plus 16, careful with that, minus a negative, and then minus four times two is minus eight. So that is going to equal Eight plus 32 is 40. The eight minus eight cancel. So we have 40 plus 16 is 56. Minus eight is 48. And one half of 48 is 24 units squared. Okay. Okay, number two, again, quadrilateral region. So looking at this, we have an equal sign, an equal sign, an equal sign, an equal sign. They're all going to be solid lines. Y intercept of five, negative four, four, and negative four. They will all fit on this grid without going in unit measurement of a scale of two. So every square is going to be one in this problem. I will graph these color coded. Y equals X plus five. Y intercept of five is right here. Slope of one, up one over one or down one left one. So this is where the red line is going to go. And then I'll switch to green for this one. Negative one, two, three, four is the y-intercept. Slope of one again, one, two, three, four, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, and so on. So there's the green one. Red and green lines are parallel because they have the same slope, different y-intercept. And then the blue one, y is equal to four is a constant function, horizontal, one, two, three, four, y-intercept of four, and it's just every value on the y equals four line. So there's that one. And then finally, the purple I'll use, negative four is the y intercept, which is here. And that's a slope of down five, right four. I can't go that way. So I go up five, left four, which is here. Up one, two, three, four, five, left one, two, three, four. All right, so now I'm going to draw my segments. So I'll use the same colors as I did before. The purple one is here. Okay, kind of let go of that before I wanted to. Yeah, that's better. Um, so let's color code these as we go to. That was the y-intercept of negative four. So this is purple. And then the green one is also negative four. So this is the green one. So we'll do that one next. Doesn't matter what order you draw these. I want it green. Okay, and the red one, let's go red now. There's the red line and finally the blue. Okay, drag that up a little bit. Okay, and there it is. So what you need to know is we wanna be, which one was blue? 
y equals four. And I didn't color code the red one, that's this one. So y is less than means I'm gonna shade below. So I wanna go this way in shading. And the green one, it's greater than, so we want to shade above the green like that. The blue one is less than, so we want to shade below the blue one. And the uh, purple one is greater than, so we want to shade this way. So when I do that, we're ending up with this quadrilateral in the center here, and I'll do that in black. So it goes like this, like this, and back up over to here. Okay, and then I'm going to delete the other lines. Okay, and the purple. Just erase all this so it's neat. I think that blue line's still hiding back there, but that's okay, I'll get rid of it. We'll just leave it, I think. I can't grab it, that's fine. Okay, so there it is. <clears throat> Did I do that correctly? I don't think so. I forgot to turn on the red one, so let me put this all back. Okay, so I also want, it should turn, it's not a triangle. I went too far up here, I forgot to draw this right there. All right, so now we have it. So that only goes to here, that goes away, that goes away. And I don't have that one side. Okay, there it is. Now I'm gonna label these, erase all this garbage that I use to create, clean up the work zone. Okay, so what are these points? I'll start with A down here. This is zero, over zero, down one, two, three, four, which is the point zero, negative four. This is the point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up one, two, three, four. B is at the point eight comma four. And this is negative one, one, two, three, four. We'll call that C, negative one, comma, four. And finally, D is negative one, two, three, four, comma, one. Okay, determine the vertices of the quadrilateral. So zero, negative four, eight, four negative one comma four, close parentheses over here. And finally, D is negative four comma one. Okay, <clears throat> so there they are. Which quadrilateral is defined by these inequalities? How can you prove your conclusion? Okay, it is a trapezoid. Okay, a trapezoid is a parallelogram with two parallel sides not a parallelogram, a quadrilateral with two parallel sides and two non-parallel sides. Okay, just to save time and my writing is not the best with this pen, uh, trapezoid is defined by these inequalities. We can prove that one pair of opposite sides is parallel because their slopes are the same. These two, slope of one, they were parallel. Okay, but these, none, nothing else was. All right, find the perimeter of the quadratic region, or quadrilateral region, I mean, quadratic region. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five. So maybe you're having difficulty seeing what I did in the last problem. So how about I do this? If I form a right triangle right here, just quickly, this is one, two, three, four, five, and this is one, two, three, four. So the Pythagorean theorem says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or the distance formula says it's the square root of a, x sub two minus x sub one plus y sub two minus y sub one, which gives us those lengths. So 
side AD or DA equals the square root of this side squared plus that side squared under the radical. So five squared is 25, four squared is 16. 25 plus 16 is 41. So DA is the square root of 41. Okay, we're gonna do the same over here. So now I'm going to take this, well, actually I wanna delete that, I didn't wanna grab that, delete. I wanna take this line segment now drag it over to eight like so, and then bring this one up here and I'll change the color because it's hard to tell when I'm using all black. Let's make these green. Okay, so, well, they're not the same green, but whatever. All right, so there's the two sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight or I could have just said eight minus zero, and then four to negative four is a distance of eight as well. So this is going to be the AB, and it's the square root of 64 plus 64 or 128. I'm just gonna leave it like that. That is eight, or it's going to be um, eight square root two, but uh, We'll just leave it like that for now. Um, and then this distance is just simply the length of it because it's horizontal. So we're going from um, eight to negative one. So that's a distance of nine. So BC equals nine. And then finally CD equals, and now we take our right triangle that we have over here and I'm going to move it over here like so, shorten it up, and then move this one over like this, and shorten it like so. There's our right triangle. This side is three, and this side is one, two, three, one, two, three as well. So that's three squared, nine, three squared, nine. So it's a square root of nine plus nine or 18. So the perimeter equals the sum of all of these. So I'm going to go to my calculator and it's square root 41 plus the square root, oh, whoops, I gotta get out of that before I do that. Square root of 41 plus the square root of 128, get out of the radical, plus nine plus the square root of 18. And that is going to be approximately 30.96. units square. Okay, now E, find the area of the quadratic region. I say quadratic again, quadrilateral. A equals one half times. Now we're gonna start at A, we have to go counterclockwise. Let me get rid of this green triangle. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna to have to go counterclockwise. So the formula says area equals one half X sub one, which is zero times Y sub two, which is four plus X sub two, which is eight times Y sub three, which is four plus X sub four, which is negative one times Y sub four. That was X sub three, by the way x sub three times y sub four, which is one, plus x sub four, which is negative four, okay? x sub one, x sub two, x sub three, x sub four is negative four, times y sub one, which is negative four. Minus, now we start with the y's, y sub one, negative four, times x sub two, eight, minus y sub two, which is four, times x sub three, which is negative one, times y minus y sub three, which is four, times x sub four, which is negative four, minus y sub four, which is one, times x sub one, which is zero. 
Okay, so just be really careful when you're doing that. Zero times negative four is nothing. And I go through and get rid of those first and this is going to cancel. So eight times four is 32. Negative times a positive is negative. So it's gonna be minus one, one times one. Negative times a negative is positive. So it's going to be plus four times four, which is 16. <clears throat> this is going to be negative 32, but it's a minus negative 32. So plus 32. And this is minus a negative four or plus four. And this is a minus uh, negative 16 or plus 16. So when I do that, I'm going to get one half. 32 minus one is 31, plus 16 is 47, uh, 79, 83, 99. So the area is one half of 99, which is 49.5 units squared. Okay, there we have it. Okay, page four brings us to the end of lesson 11. Go do your problem set.